Because I think like when you go through this this uh, chapter and you take apart like we just did and you go line by line, you can't believe those lies about who I, I think I might be when I see, oh my goodness, the God of the universe, he is thinking about me all more than the sand. It doesn't matter what I think about myself or what somebody else thinks about me because he is the one that really matters and look how much he loves me. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us, and let's talk it out. Hi, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day week. And you're going to be really glad you're here because we are not going to Valentine's Day it up <laughs> in a nauseating way. No, no, no. <laughs> We're going to talk about the love story that we all really, really need. Yeah. Because the thing about Valentine's Day, I mean, obviously... There, there are so many good things about love to celebrate. Yes. And so we want to celebrate those things. But it's also a day that brings up those things that are that are hurtful in people yeah. Yeah. at the same time. And yeah. so God knows that. He knows what we're going through. He knows our hearts. And He loves us so much through it. So we're going to talk about a love story for the generations. Yes. And we're going to really dig into Psalm 139. So we hope you'll do it with us. Grab yeah. your Bibles. Get it out. Get it out on your app, wherever Psalm 139, we're going to be talking about that. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much that we all want with love. You know, we want that great romantic story. Absolutely. But at the same time, it is never going to satisfy our needs. Any kind of earthly romantic love, it's a great thing. I'm not putting that down, but it is not going to fully satisfy what we need. May I tell you a funny story about a couple of um, loves I tried to find when I was in high school? Please. Um, Because I remember my best friend and I would sit in her car before school and we would talk about the love notes we were hoping we would get from the boyfriends we didn't have. (laughs) (laughs) But it's good to have goals, you know? Yeah. So I remember as a senior in high school, I found a cute boy at the mall and he was two hours late to pick me up. Rude. From my parents' house. And then he offered to steal me something when we went to the mall to Ooh, shop. What a winner. He's such right? a winner. <laughs> Mate and a thief. I know. <laughs> Be still my heart. It's true. And there was a couple like that who weren't like quality winners. And looking back, I just wanted like a love story. I just wanted to have a story like the movies that you see. So I'd like as a woman, I think our hearts just are drawn to that. Yeah. I didn't let him steal something. I do want to let you know that. Oh. I did say no oh. to that Justin Timberlake video. You said <laughs> Steal my oh, heart. Justin yes. Timberlake City? Yeah, I know. I don't know. I'm like, well, that's on you, lady. It was tough. <laughs> you told him to steal your heart instead. Yeah, and he didn't. But I so badly wanted that love story, even just as a little girl. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone wants that love story. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone wants to be loved. And even if you've come to a conclusion where you're like, I don't think I'll ever, I have a lot of friends now that are like, I don't know if I'll ever get married, especially, you know, I have several friends that are now post-divorce, sure. you know, and so it's like, I don't know if I'm going to do that again. I don't know if I'll get married again. I don't know if I'll fall in love again. And for me, I, I've, I've teeter tottered over these past yeah. couple of years. Like, will will I do the whole love thing again? Just because, mm-hmm. you know, I tried it and it was good for time at times. And then it was real bad to the point where it, it doesn't exist anymore um, because of divorce. But I, I have to redefine what love is. Mm. Yeah. Well, and for really for nearly everybody, you know, no relationship is perfect. Right. And how many people who've been married for years are saying, I wish I had that romantic thing again, mm-hmm. you know? And and there are ways that God can bring that stuff back to us, but it, it's all fleeting. It's all about feelings. Mm-hmm. And what we're talking about is like the greatest love note of all. It doesn't change. It's not fleeting. Yeah. It's not about a feeling. It's about fact yeah. and truth. And so we're, we're going to read Psalm 139, 
and um, just start by going through this. So let let these words sink in, and then we're going to let Joyce kind of take us through a lot of it and talk really specifically about some of these verses. So starting with Psalm 139, um, right at the beginning, O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I cannot attain it. Wow. Okay. So good. Yeah, super good. So I have seven through 12. Um, where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is bright as the day for darkness is as light with you. I love that. Mm, That's good. Okay, I got uh, verses 13 through 24. For you formed me in my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eye saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. I'm going to skip down to 22 or I'm sorry, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I just, wow. can I just say I love reading it out loud because if they <laughs> didn't, like if you guys didn't go look it up on your own, we, as we read that over you, mm-hmm. that is sinking into people's hearts. Like God is speaking that over them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just gives good. me chills. Go ahead. <laughs> and when you take this like verse by verse, yeah. line by line. Yeah. I think about what makes me feel loved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's it's being known, being seen, um, being thought about as something special and yeah. and all of those things, every one of those things are written in this love letter from God. Mm-hmm. You know, I know you, I see you, I I love you, I created you for a special purpose. I think of you so often you can't even count yeah. mm-hmm. how often. I, I, I just think there's so many beautiful things in there. So we're going to start with Joyce, and she's going to talk um, a little bit more about this to get us rolling, and then we are going to delve into this verse by verse. <laughs> you stuck. You ver- ver- verse by bit. You know what it is? <laughs> It's the teeth. They yeah. got stuck together um, because they look good. Cut you know, so straight. Because I've got these crazy trays trying to straighten my teeth. They're out right now, and then you've got these little sticky <laughs> things. So my mouth just stuck. Anyway, here's yeah. Joyce. He loves that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Psalm one thirty nine seventeen and eighteen. How precious and weighty, also, are your thoughts to me. Oh God, how vast is the sum of them. If I could count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awoke, I could count all the way to the end and I would still be with you. (laughs) Everybody say, God's got me on his mind. mind. Learn how to think about that when you first wake up in the morning. God, you've got me on your mind right now. Awesome. Awesome. God thinks you're wonderful. Don't sit there and just go. I said, God thinks you're wonderful. (laughs) Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, I know this will be a stretch for some of you, but one of the things that you can do that is actually very biblical and has been very life-changing for me and 
it also helps you to renew your mind. And that is not only to learn to think like God thinks, but to learn to talk like God talks. So, you can get up every morning and say, God thinks I am wonderful. Good, we have three kind of wimpy, weak claps. Now. You have no idea how this will change your life because you are never gonna live beyond what you believe about yourself. And as long as you think you're a mess and you never do anything right and your life is lousy and you, you know, you think maybe God loves you on the days when you behave real well and he doesn't like you so much on the days that he doesn't and he's really a little bit miffed at you and has been kind of mad and disappointed at you your whole life. Come on. God thinks you are wonderful, even in your most messy times. That is so good to know. It's so good. Is. I'm so glad because there are some really messy, messy times. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you, you know, it's easy to think, oh, what does God look down and see and think? Yeah. yeah. And, in, and when you read this, you know, he thinks, yeah, you know, we're going to work on some yeah. stuff, yeah. but I see amazing things. I think you're wonderful, and I love you. I love what Joy said, you'll never live beyond the way you see yourself. Uh, what do you guys think about that? It's powerful. It's powerful, and, I, and I've, I mean, I've dealt with that, you know? Yeah. Um, when you feel like you're unlovable, when you feel like you're unattractive, when you feel like you've failed in something that you, you know, really worked hard at— and you just feel like a bad mom. You feel, you know, and I, I went through that. And I, and I think I think it's beautiful that, you know, Scripture shows that it's okay to have those yeah. moments Me of too. where he, you're buried in the depth of, you know, and to know yeah. that he's still there. Yeah. Even when you think those negative things, um, God is still there. But it's hard to mm -hmm. pull yourself out of it. And, like, I literally have had to sometimes sit in that, but then, like, snap out of it yeah. and be like, even if I don't feel like it, I had to start speaking. Like Joyce said, I had to start speaking. No, I'm a good mom. Like mm -hmm. God thinks I'm wonderful. He thinks I'm amazing. He mm -hmm. thinks God thinks I'm a good wife. You know, I'm still good wife material. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like because once you've had some, man, you're still triple A <laughs> you, wife I'm material. Still triple A <laughs> wife. You know, and you know what? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a wife because you're still triple A person I'm material. A, yeah, exactly. But the <laughs> devil wants you to think that you're a failure at everything exactly. when something oh, yeah. fails, and yeah. then it it trickles He's into so it trickles into everything else. And so maybe I'm not a good cook, or maybe yeah. I wasn't a good yeah. cleaner. Maybe I was, you know, like and, and it just it it. You can go down that spiral yeah. of just nitpicking, and that's just not just. I know with, that spiral. Yeah, because I did it on Monday to Ginger. <laughs> oh, really? I did. I you, you want to share? Tell on myself here for go a ahead. moment. Because she's the most wonderful, I will cry. I'll cry again talking about the way I cried to her on Monday. But I was, I got very in my head, and I started questioning all these things about myself, putting limits on myself of who I thought that I was. And so I got in this place, and I thought, and you just need to have a conversation with Ginger because she'll tell you some truth. And so I am, I'm crying in the middle of. Starbucks, and I thought these poor people watching think something terrible has happened. I should have said, it's fine, I'm having a moment. I'm just having a bit of a breakdown. Yes, but I think I had just started questioning myself and who these, these things that God says I am, I don't think that I believed them anymore. And yeah. so I, I needed to say out loud the lies that the devil had been telling me, yeah. because then to combat that with the truth that I am good enough, like I am, I can do, <laughs> I can do this. More than good yeah. enough. And I, I had forgotten, I think. I, I th it was so, so, um, so special, I think, to be able to hear what you were dealing with and to be able to share the truth with you hmm. once again. Yeah. Because we do, we, we get stuck in those places and we yeah. need to hear it. We mm -hmm. need to hear the truth and we need to change our thinking. But Erin was sharing and she's so sweet. And, you know, like she said, she's crying in Starbucks. And, <laughs> and it wasn't like sweet, like tears. It was like sobbing. Like I made a sound at one point. <laughs> oh, wow. It was, it was a moment. But then she's saying all these things. Maybe I'm not this. Maybe I'm not that. And, 
And I was just listening to her and and thinking, I know who Erin is. Right. I know how how great she is, all the things that God has put into her. And then when she got to the line that said, maybe I'm just not trustworthy, I just started... I was, I, she laughed. I literally <laughs> laughed. And I sit, I'm laughing as she's crying. And I'm like, I am so sorry she's to be such a good laughing at you in Starbucks <laughs> while you're crying. But if you could hear the things that you're saying, for, for me to hear you say, maybe I'm not trustworthy, <laughs> like, Erin is the most loving, yes. trustworthy person you're going to run across yes. anywhere. So anyway, just to to have those confirmations yeah. Yeah. that we all need yeah. to hold each other up. Because yeah. I think like when you go through this, this uh, chapter and you take apart like we just did and you go line by line, you can't believe those lies right. about who I, I think I might be when I see, oh my goodness, the God of the universe, he is thinking about me all more than the sand. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter what I think about myself or what somebody else thinks about me because he is the one that really matters and look how much he loves me. Yeah. And I think it's powerful that like even with you saying like I needed to say it out loud. And that's one reason why mm-hmm. like during some of my toughest times I glean from the Psalms. Like yeah. I glean because David has has been such a um a testimony to me to show like you can have those moments of yeah. Oh, yeah. Of, of being really disgusted with yourself, with God, with people, with everything. And, but then it's after saying it out loud, then he always comes back and, you know, then yeah. s- snaps out of it. Yeah. Like, cause it, I and read, yet I will. And yet yeah. I will. Yeah. Cause I, I, I hate, will trust. I, 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 I even heard, like in this, like I read it different ways now that I've gone through certain things in my life. And I, I used to always just think like, you know, he was just happy that God sees him all the time. But I think sometimes he was like, I can't even get away from you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I just want to sit in my sit, stew. In my, st- stew yeah. in my my mess and, uh-huh. and be like, no, I'm not trustworthy, or I'm not this, or I'm not that. And he, but now, it, but but yet, you still love me. It's like, it's just. I think it's fair to feel like you know some people feel bad for feeling bad, you mm-hmm. know, and having those moments like you had. But that's why it's good to have yeah. people around that you can say that see you and know you can say like, okay, yeah, you can work on this and this. Yeah. But for the like for the most part, these are all just lies, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, I just wanted to say like it, it takes a big person to be able to say I feel like this yeah Mm -hmm. but even in this I know that God sees me and I know he's going to make everything okay Mm -hmm. yeah yeah what are some of those things that make you guys feel loved because I was I was saying that for me it it, it, these words mean so much to me Mm -hmm. because you know I have felt maybe invisible at times Mm -hmm. um no one's ever made me feel that way I almost want to laugh now. How can you possibly feel (laughs) invisible? You are ginger stocky. (laughs) See, that makes me laugh really hard. (laughs) How can you feel invisible? Everybody sees you, girl. It's so easy. Isn't that... Yeah. It's it's almost laughable. I'm looking at you like, are you serious? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But who hasn't felt like... Nobody's seeing what I'm feeling inside. Nobody's... um, Nobody's loving me because I'm not lovable. Who who possibly could if they knew everything that was going on in mm-hmm. here? Yeah. And God is saying, I see you, I know you, I created you, and still yeah. I will always love you. So what what are some things that make you guys in this or anywhere else? What are the what are qualifications that you um receive to feel loved? I think you just said it. I think it's the and still because I know when I am at my worst and when I am I feel broken or not beautiful or whatever whatever kind of day I'm having and I and it's the yucky part of Aaron mm-hmm. the and still I still love you like you're still my girl to to be reminded that I can't screw this up so much that he won't want me yeah that yeah. is when I feel the most loved because I'm going to have honest real moments where I cry or I I make a mistake but to know that I can't ever do it that much, um, the perfectionist in me, that is important for me to hear. Yeah. 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 I think for me, especially in this this recent season has been, um, I, f- I felt the most love from God when he has allowed me to go through my process mm-hmm. and just really figure out who who yeah. I am, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, and, and never this, turn his back and never, never t- look away and say, Oh, this is too much. Yeah, yeah. Even when I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to be in leadership at church right now. Mm-hmm. 
Like, and that's a big thing for somebody like sure. me that's a pastor's kid mm-hmm. and been a, a pastor's wife, been on pastoral yeah. staff. Something, and for me to yeah. be able to say, like, I'm going through a really tough time and I really don't want to, I don't want to do that right now, mm-hmm. you know? And I don't know if I can actually physically go into the church at this moment yeah. because I'm hurt right now. And God never said, okay, then I'm I'm, I'm out. done with you. Right? Yeah. Like he's, he's right. so I felt the most love from him by not feeling what I feel like a lot of times religion Mm. has made me feel. Like if you do this, you'll get a slap on the wrist. So I lived out of performance and fear so long that God would be mad at me when it was honestly not even God's heart towards me. So me kind of unlearning a lot of the things that that I learned growing up and allowing him to teach me through, he's just like, we're gonna walk through this together. He's been so patient with me like relearning almost the yeah. basics, mm-hmm. you know, which yeah. has been such a sweet, sweet love story of like me being like, I mean, literally where I'm like, no, I don't want to talk to you right now. Mm-hmm. But he'll still be like, all right, cool. We'll just, be here lay, when you're we'll just lay here. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I love that. I'll just hang out here with you I'll until just hang you're out. ready. Uh-huh. He doesn't force me to talk about yeah. it. He's not forcing me to process it in, in a certain way. Like it's just been so loving when I, and, and that makes me like, okay, I'll, I'll I'll talk now because <laughs> it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a chore. Yeah, to to talk sure. to him and to be loved by him anymore. It used to feel like a chore, and so now it just feels like life. You know that reminds me of, of my kids because one of the things that God taught me so much about His love for me was in being a parent. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. because wow, I mm-hmm. can't even describe my yeah. love yeah. for these two girls and. And seeing who they are, and of course, seeing them go through whatever they're going through in life, my love never was any less. Yeah. And he loves me so much more than I love them. Yeah. He loves them so much more mm-hmm. than I can even imagine. And so, feeling that kind of like almost a gut wrenching love because if they're hurting, oh, yeah, Mama Bear's ready oh to, yeah, you know, do yeah. whatever it takes to fix their problems and to do what I can to get them past any yeah. pain and and God feels that for us and yeah. his heart is broken when ours mm-hmm. is broken. So I've just learned so much through that. But with my kids, um, you know, God created them and it's so exciting to me to see how the specific things that he put in them and how different they are and the wonderful things that he had in mind because they're just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're very different. And so like with our oldest, with Taylor, I had to do what you're talking about. I had to be ready to listen when she wanted to talk yeah, and be there and not push. But when she was ready, it was always wonderful. Yeah. And and I loved hearing her heart. Yeah, And with Morgan, our other daughter, I, there were more times that I knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. And yet as she's getting older, that's changing a little bit And because now we don't have as much time together. Right, so yeah. I, I love the way God pursues us, yeah. the way that I want to pursue my girls to know who they are and to mm-hmm. be there for them. God pursues me mm-hmm. and He's always there when I need Him. And He's not just hanging back mad because I didn't call often right. enough. Yeah. So that's where I need to be, you know, yes. right? that kind of a parent. I don't know. I've just learned so much no, through that, motherhood. That's so That's so real. Like I've literally, I've learned so much about God's love for me through being a mother yeah. to my Taylor. You yeah. know, um, she's a teenager and... Because honestly, I was really, really, da- uh, you know, mad at God. I was really angry at him. Like, if you know me so well and you knew all these things, why would you allow all this stuff to happen? Oh, I've and asked like, those questions. You know, like, mm-hmm. if you yeah. love me so much, then why yep. is all of this? Like, if, if you knew this was going to happen from the from the womb, like, why would you allow yeah. me to go through right. all of this, you know? But then, like, having my daughter and, and the older she gets, um, I just, I want her... My love for her has changed, of course, as she develops into a woman. You know, I give her space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want her to come to me. Right. But I'm not going to force her to come to me. Yeah. You know, like, because I'm used to like when she was young, you know, every time she would hurt, she'd come and scream and cry and run to mama, you know. But now she's older. She Mm -hmm. wants to figure things out on her own. But it's shown me like God, God does the same thing for me. You know, like that love is me not 
tapping her and and fixing mm-hmm. everything for her right. is not because I don't love her. She's just growing up, and yeah. I have to trust that what I've instilled in her and what I've put in her, she's gonna make the best decisions for herself. And that's hard. Mm-hmm. So I can it's only imagine really how hard, hard it is yeah. for God. You know, like seeing us make all these mistakes and still being like, I love you and I'm here whenever you call me. Yesterday, Kaden got in trouble because he threw food in the cafeteria. <gasps> Kate. And so he got to sit <laughs> Did at- he scream food fight when he did it? He did it. <laughs> he did it really quietly for just one friend in particular. I said, buddy, why did you do that? You, you can't do that. Like trying not to laugh. And he said, well, because... He thought it was funny. I said, I, I am funny, sure though. it was funny. He's so funny. now he's at the naughty table for the rest of the week in the cafeteria. Oh, no. But even like that showed me, like, I, that was funny as a parent. That was a funny story. But also, like, you have to have discipline. We can't always throw food. But, like, delighting in the things that he shares with me, the funny things that happen to a second yeah. grader, and also the consequences that are with your actions. Like, God delights in us, and he thinks that I'm kind of funny sometimes. And, like, sometimes I need an errand. Let's not do that again. But I love the idea that he is, he's, I bring him joy. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. I make him laugh sometimes. Yeah. And he's just like. Even when we don't make the best decisions, like, look at yeah. that girl. Like, let's not do <laughs> yeah. bangs like that again, Aaron. Yeah. But you're still beautiful. You're at the naughty table for the rest when of the week. When we end up at the naughty table. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we're going to check back in with, with Joyce. And she is going to tell us about an eye-opening perspective on what really happens in our lives when we don't like who we are. This is a great way to take this verse and flip it on end and see how it impacts us. Verse 15, again, my frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously. I like the intricately. God took a lot of time making you very specifically and very specially And he doesn't appreciate it when we don't like what he did. I said he doesn't appreciate it when we don't like what he did. I remember a friend of mine many years ago, people in the crowd were invited to go up for prayer and she went up to the pastor and said, I just, I need you to pray for me. I just hate myself. I just hate myself. He backed off and looked at her and he said, who do you think you are? She was expecting some pity. He said, who do you think you are? If God loved you so much, they sent his only son to die for you and to suffer like he did, that you might be free. Who do you think you are to hate yourself? So we need to start seeing ourselves the way God sees us and It's such a healing thing to begin to like yourself instead of being against yourself. And I know what I'm talking about because I spent a lot of my life not liking myself, but I'm rather fond of myself now. Not in a selfish, self-centered way, but I just finally figured out I got to be with myself all the time. There's never a moment in my life when I get away from me. I can't even go to the bathroom without me. I can't do anything without me. And so if I don't like me, I'm in serious trouble because I'm with me all the time. (laughs) It's true. It's true. We can't get away from ourselves. (laughs) And that thought of if God put this much time into who I am, who am I to say that the God of the universe did it wrong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you think that feels super countercultural, though? Like those verses 13 through 15 where it's talking about how intricately we're made and our frame and just our physical being. Doesn't that feel so countercultural of how we see ourselves? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. because the culture is is completely different. It's telling us to do the opposite. Yeah, I should look like this instead. Yes, Put a I filter should. on to cover yeah. what you actually Fil- look like. Right. I mean, makeup, filters, everything. And, and I just think, and you're, I think about the kids today, though. Yes. Like, yeah. because of so much like reality TV and stuff, even mm-hmm. um, like the first day of school, <laughs> that. Yeah. Kids are literally like for the black community, these black girls are getting like lace front wigs and full face makeup for the first day of for school. The first day of wow. School. If like, only you saw my first day of school picture. I know. I was <laughs> wow. looking like, what? you know, like I remember having some self esteem issues growing up. Not a ton though, but like I remember having some. Sure. 
Um, because I just wanted to look like a Cosby kid or somebody from Full House, you know, like Punky so Brewster. Punky you said. Brewster as a little <laughs> kid, Punky Brewster. Then older was like Lisa Bonet. Like yeah. I just wanted to be like cool, you know. Uh, uh-huh. But it was still more laid back, and so I just think about like you know kids that are growing up now and how hard it is for them to love themselves mm-hmm. because of like the images that are they're. They can't they, like just how Joyce is saying we can't escape ourselves. We also can't escape society's expectations of like what girls right. and you know guys should look like, and so it's really yeah. tough. I feel I feel bad for a lot of the teens. Like oh, it's it's hard to keep up with that because I know I go through self esteem issues, especially post um, pregnancy. You know, having my daughter, and it's hard to. I did my body drastically changed after I had her. It's a bad excuse when she's almost twenty, but still. <laughs> Bounced back. <laughs> and it's like, it's so, I mean, but still. You look good. Thank you, girl. But like, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, there are certain things, of course, we can keep doing to help ourselves. And, and Joyce always talks about that too. But yeah. I mean, we I, I, I had to get to a place where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be with me all the time. Right. And at this point, I'm the only one with me. So I have to start. <laughs> I'm the only in one the with, in the bathroom and <laughs> my house. on Christmas. I'm by myself. I, I have to be. I have to start liking myself yeah. at the yes. phase I'm in right now. I can't always be yeah. in progress. Like mm-hmm. I can't. I'll like myself more when this, or I'll like yeah. myself more when that. Oh my goodness! How many of us do do we think when I lose this number on the scale, sure. then I'll like myself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or when. My hair grows to this length, then I'm going to feel better about myself. Yes. Or when I get this education yeah. or this job, I'm going to feel better about myself. You're right. We can't live in that when I get there. Because exactly. wow. honestly, because when we get there, we're still then, we're not even always celebrating when we got there. Yeah. Because we're trying to get to the next You're when right. I get You're there. And then I look back and I'm like, I was not bad right then. I was trying to still get there and I need right. to get back there. You know, so. And we're missing what God had miss- us for us in that place. Pr- we're missing the present moment absolutely i heard a really interesting um interview with a doctor on a podcast this past week and he's a plastic surgeon so this is what his world and he was saying that people are coming to him saying i want to look like this filter this instagram filter can you make me look like this and based upon that clip that we just heard from joyce that goes so far against the creation that he made. Mm-hmm. Like what we say when we say, I don't like this, I want to look like this, that saying, I don't like the art that you made, that creation that you made is not good enough. So I'm going to take it and fix it myself. Right. Yeah. And there's it's like the heart motive behind it. Yeah. And I'm not saying all plastic surgery is bad, but but I think the motive no, behind I still some want of it. To yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's not the point. At, at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah. I want this gown. But that's not because you want to look like somebody no, else. No, I want to look like me without a fupa. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you taught me that word. <laughs> I want to look like that Snapchat filter that totally distorts your face and changes your voice. <laughs> the one that makes your mouth yeah, like that. And you talk like this can, all the time. Can you do that for me? Yeah. <laughs> no. Don't you think so much of this and what you're talking about with the culture and, and what we face, what kids face, has so much to do with rejection. Absolutely. It's because we felt it from somewhere else. Yes. And we've taken it internally. Mm-hmm. And we've decided this is reality mm-hmm. instead of what God says about me is reality. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I think if we if we grab onto this Psalm 139 and we read through all of these amazing points, yeah. how he's created us, what he has in mind for us, how he sees us, how he thinks of us, and we let that override the lies of rejection mm-hmm. yeah. that we take as our own, whether it's because of a divorce yeah. or that group at church that hasn't invited us. Right. to the thing that we want to be part of. I mean, there's rejection everywhere. Oh, yeah. And when we begin to experience rejection, we also see it in places that it's not. Yeah. I mean, because... Oh, it's your lens. Exactly. Yeah, it it becomes our Snapchat filter. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's the filter of rejection uh-huh. because I was rejected over here. Now, what did they mean by that? They're rejecting yeah, me too. That is so good. No, I had a conversation with someone just the other day. They assumed I was attacking them based upon my dis- my disagreeing of their opinion, and they took that so personal. This has happened before, and so I said, "I I really just have another opinion. I will always have other opinions." And so it doesn't. It's not you. It's just me thinking for myself. And mm. th- 
the conversation was so good that it came back to rejection because of that filter of rejection that they had experienced. They took anybody disagreeing with them, especially those close to them, as saying, you're wrong. You are not right. Yeah. So I'm disagreeing with you. And uh, rejecting you. I'm rejecting you. When yeah. really, it's, it's not that at all, but that's the filter. Yeah. And it, it does impact your whole life. Yeah. And that's one reason why I'm like doing a lot of self-work you know, and of course prayer, but I'm also in counseling because I don't want, whenever I do decide to get into another serious relationship, yeah. I don't want to always, you know, think about how I was portrayed in my last marriage mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. or how I thought my ex-husband looked at me. I want to, I want to go with fresh eyes. And so yeah. I, I'm doing that deep work, you know, for friendships, relationships, all of them, just so I can make sure that I'm not somebody saying something to me that might be some of the same stuff that my ex-husband may have said. Mm. It's not yeah. the same thing though. Right. I, I can't, I, like I don't want to trigger and be, yeah. be triggered and say, and become defensive mm-hmm. for something that might be completely opposite of what I experienced. So yeah. yeah. So doing okay. that, that, that work. Yeah. We need strategies. Yes. We need to know, okay, these, these things are going to happen. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm going to not like what someone says. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be rejected, not just feel rejected. There are people who will reject yes. me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so how do I handle it? Mm-hmm. And so I love like, Psalm 139 in my Bible is like, I think the page is worn out (laughs) because you go back to it over Over and and over over and over. And it is a weapon against the way we dislike ourselves because God doesn't leave room for that. Mm -hmm. He says, no, this is who you are. Mm -hmm. And it helps us to fight those lies. And so we're going to go one more time to Joyce. And she's basically just going to lay down the law and straight up tell us how to act. So (laughs) let's listen. And I pray that the participation in and the sharing of your faith might produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with Christ Jesus unto his glory. So now I've been looking at that quite a bit and I've read it over and over and over and I'd like to just camp here and stay on top of it for about 20 minutes till you get it, but I really don't have time to do that. So let me just reiterate this. He's saying, look, I want you to recognize and appreciate and have a precise knowledge of all the good things that are in you. Gosh, you're excited. (laughs) Wasn't that thrilling? Let me try that again. Now, you want me to know why you responded? I'll tell you why you responded that way, because this is something we're not used to. It's much easier for us to sit around and think about everything that's wrong with us. And the devil helps us with that. Starting very early, he helps us with that. You're not, you're not, you didn't, you didn't, you're not, you should have, but you didn't, and on and on and on. But he says, I want you to have precise knowledge and be very informed about all the good things that are yours and in you in Christ. This is not about you being wonderful in yourself. It's about you believing the Bible and saying, I am wonderful because Jesus paid a great price for me when he hung on that cross and bled and died when he suffered. And I'm going to start acting like I know who I am in him. Yeah. Well, she told mm-hmm. us. Yeah. She did. She, did. she was this kind of yeah. voice that she had. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Don't don't you love that God already knew what we were going to need? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so many years ago, hundreds of years ago, he put it in his word for us in a love letter like this. Mm-hmm. If we want to get really racy, yeah. I mean, Ooh. we we can just totally go off track and go to Song of Solomon, my, you know. My favorite. Or, let, I mean, let's just... As a teenager, it definitely was Ooh. my favorite. <laughs> I mean, we're like, this is nasty. Is this the we're, Bible? <laughs> yeah. We, we're talking Valentine's Day. You know, let's let's, do let's it. go all the let's way to Breasts Like Doves yeah. and all of it, you know? and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, God, God appreciates 
his own creation. Mm-hmm. He yeah. created us. And so, I mean, he says, behold, you are beautiful, my love. And and God's talking to us. He says, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves behind your veil. Your hair is like a flock of goats <laughs> leaping down it's the slopes of Gilead. For. A flock of... You have such goat-like hair. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> many. <laughs> The goats goat? were so valuable then. Yeah. It was like the highest thing. And, you know, now your hair being like a flock of goats, I wake up like that many mornings. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I just love these these verses mm-hmm. and, and the way that God expressed His love to us in so many different ways throughout Scripture. That's one of my favorite books of the Bible. Some of it is you a little, little vixen. I am. Naughty I girl. look so sweet, but I did put a hoop in my nose ring, so <laughs> I'm a little bit racy. Um, it, you, like in the one you just read, and there's some others in there that you can feel like tangibly how much God is mm-hmm. just adores us. Yeah. And when he talks about us as his bride and he just longs for us, I remember reading that at a really important time in my life where I felt like I was unwanted and I was never going to be picked. So to hear that he he sees me and he adores me and I'm beautiful, it was just, it just changed my world. Yeah. To know that. And how Joyce said, like, how we, how the, I was like, the crowd was so dry when she talked when she's like, it's because we're not used to hearing. Yeah. That. Yeah. We, right. and especially me in my very rigid, you know, Pentecostal background, it was like, I was I was just afraid of the wrath of God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God was like, you know, don't mess with him. Don't mm-hmm. get on his bad side. <laughs> you know, you heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah, whoa. <laughs> you don't want that. So don't want to like, go there. Don't want to go there. So, um, so to hear how much he adores us has been, I mean, and I've heard it over and over again, but to live it and to really. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. You can hear it, but it's not the yeah. same as living it. When yeah. you start living it, when it becomes a thing of like, no, he really does love mm-hmm. me. He really does believe I'm beautiful. Um, it's a, it's an, it's a change. There's a pivot that happens when you go beyond just there saying is. it out loud. So it's been, it's been quite the journey living it out. Yeah. and Because it doesn't feel like it all the time. No. Oh, no. Mm-mm. It doesn't feel like it all the time for anybody. And that's mm-hmm. why it's a constant thought battle. Oh, yeah. We have to change our thoughts and we have to allow God to be kind of like like the medicine that we need, that mm-hmm. that healing salve that... Yeah. that goes over the dryness and those Absolutely. things that we don't like our, about ourselves, those no. things that, that we repeat over and over and, and change that record yeah. to something different. And, and the only way to do that is to change it to what he says instead of what the world has said or what we've said about ourselves. And you know what? The church has also taught us that almost talking about like the exterior part of our, our bodies, like our eyes and our hair and things like that, are self-absorbed yeah. to an extent. You know, yeah. But even hearing what you read in the the Song of Solomon, it's like, no, he really does. Like, mm-hmm. he cares about that stuff too. Not that we're to be so overly concerned about it, right. but he cares. He, he spent time to figure out. Like, you look at someone's eyes. Like, like I look at yours, and you have so many different like colors in them. What do you deem your eye color as? Hazel. Uh, yeah. Okay, I get that. See that? I I mean, no, but I see. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see? I see a lot of different colors, but I'm saying, like everybody's. He's but he spent, intricately made he those. He intricately mm-hmm. made those. Yeah. He intricately made all of our fingerprints to be different. Mm-hmm. He intricately made you know how our hair is, and we talk about my hair all the time. And I'm getting, I'm probably gonna lock my hair up. But he cares about. Yeah. He knew I was gonna do that too. Like he he just cares about. The exterior and the interior, but it's it's okay to care about this stuff because he really does. Yeah, there's care. nothing out of his purview, and the world's idea of beauty is so different than yes. his. That's why yeah. there are, you know, countless options of people out there. That's yeah. why we don't all look alike. Yeah, because God is such a creative God yeah. that we don't need to limit ourselves to the magazine idea of beauty. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's it's hard not to so much but, smaller but it, than but, how big God is. Exactly. But you have you have to be intentional though. Oh yeah. Especially today because you're it's just every image is just thrown at us. So. I, I want to end with that. So what what are some things that that we can do with this? Okay, we have this beautiful love letter from God now. Mm-hmm. What what do we do with that? How do we combat 
those things. Because I, I think of today for many people, is it, it's a really hard day. Yeah. And they're maybe wishing they had something they didn't, or they're hurt by something that happened to them, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, what, are, what are some of those things you combat that with? I think you need to look in the mirror. First of all, I have my, my answer is two part. I think you have to take Psalm 139 and go verse by verse and just like meditate it over and over again until you start to believe it. Take it as your own. Yes. And it's, it's not just a quick read and then you move on to the next thing. I think this is a chapter of the Bible we just have to take our time in. And just like in a relationship, you don't just speed through it yeah. and you get to know that person and you're good to go. Yeah. You have to, to continually get to know their love for you. And so it's the same with this. I think you just read over and over and meditate on it. And then look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself why you're beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Because I think we need to remind ourselves that, that my frame was created by him. That's good. Uh, I love that. And so I'll, I'll do the two-part thing too, because after doing the scripture, one thing that I, that's helped me in some of my lowest times is creating a playlist in my music oh, yeah, too, too of things that, that echo mm-hmm. what what the scripture says. It's yeah. like putting it in different forms too. Like, you know, sometimes I read it to myself. Sometimes I let the app play it and I listen to the man that talks like this and he reads it for me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or I'll make a playlist of like, you know, girl, you got it, you know, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. songs as I get yeah. ready. That's great. It helps me, you know? Yeah. Um, and also when I'm headed to somewhere, like even if it's a date or an interview, I just play that playlist to help me feel you know, powerful and strong and remind myself of what God says and who God says I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the, the last thing I do is like, I, I get dressed like, <laughs> cause a lot of times when I'm in those slumps and, and it, like Satan wants to keep me low and wants to keep me like in the bed and not wanting to human. <laughs> like yeah. I say that, that yeah. means interact with people, but I get dressed and I, I, I get dressed like I'm going somewhere to see somebody that I really I'm excited to see. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's just me and God. Yeah. And I take myself on dates a lot now, like whether it's to the movies or out to eat, like that's something I plan to do on Valentine's Day. And, you know, like I was kind of like, if nobody asks me out on a date, I'm taking myself. I'm going to mm-hmm. still Great. wear either pink or red and I'm still going to act all girly. I'll go to the store and I'll buy myself flowers, you know, yeah. like I'm not going to sit and in, in a sad state because my situation was that was out of my control mm-hmm. is it is it still you know mm-hmm. has an impact on me today. I'm going to do things actively yeah. to to make sure that I That's feel great loved. encouragement. Yeah, I think there's a really um, good reason. God is just so smart. There's a really good reason. <laughs> he really is <laughs> that he ended Psalm 139 with these verses: "Search me, O God, and know my heart. Mm-hmm. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there is any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting." Because the things that grieve God, it's it's not like we think gr- big grievous things. It's not always right. some some big sin or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's those things that just breaks God's heart yeah. because we're not seeing ourselves the way. Mm-hmm. That he sees us. Yeah. So I, I say, God, search me and know me. Change my thoughts. Help me to see myself the way that you see mm-hmm. me. Help me to know how much you love me, not yeah. to always feel it because mm-hmm. we don't go by our feelings, but to know deep inside my soul how much you love me. And I think it's so important for all of us to know that we are already loved. Yeah. You know, you. You're not working toward God's love. You are already loved. You are already chosen. You are already His design and His masterpiece mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. So I, I I don't know. What better love note could you ever get right. at Valentine's Day or any other time? Never. Yeah, no no better. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank it's, you. it's fun talking about this stuff mm-hmm. with you. I love you guys. I love, I love you. you. <laughs> Well, we do have some things to offer. Um, we are offering absolutely free, like always, um, pretty much. here we, we love to give you free stuff just so we get the Word of God in your hands. Um, this is a little digital booklet that you can get it, and it's called You Are Loved. If you go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can see where you can download that. And it's just more of that reminder, getting more of God's Word into your spirit, because that really is what helps. And um, it's like, 
like Jay said, you're not just saying it anymore. You're living it. So you can begin living this. And then also when you go there, we hope that you'll find out more about the podcast. Subscribe to it wherever you listen to podcasts. Drop us some notes. We love reading your comments. And uh, we love having you be part of this. You are that beautiful person that God created. You are so special. He thinks of you so often. You are so valuable. And if you're going through the best Valentine's you ever had, then I'm so glad. And thanks for sharing it with us. And if you're having a hard one, remember that God's love for you will never change. He loves you so much in the hard times and in the great times. And He has good for you in the future. We will see everyone next time. Yeah. And uh, we're glad you're with us. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you. JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us.